Uh, there's a, a good, small, intimate crowd here, and I think it's going to be really a lot of fun, and I really look forward to interacting with all of you. Uh, again, because of the size of the room and stuff, please feel free to use the microphones uh, during uh, uh, the cases. And I think the, the, the most fun for both the speakers as well as the audience will be the interaction that we have with all of you. So uh, without further ado, and I want to introduce my uh, co-moderators, uh, Dr. Jim uh, Hermiller from uh, Indianapolis and Dr. Dave Reisick from uh, Scottsdale. And we're happy to be here with all of you. So. Without further ado, uh, Dr. David Brown is going to show us a case on direct aortic access. And David, thank you for doing this. I know it's sort of a last minute thing, but it's wonderful that you could put this together for us. Well, thanks, Bill. Uh, this is a little bit like taking Coles to Newcastle, telling Bill and Mauricio about uh, trans aortic. So uh, let's uh, fly through this and just have a little bit of fun learning uh, the stuff that the surgeons bring to this mix. Um, and so, let's see, I think my slide uh, of disclosures got left in the last one, and that doesn't work, so the, that works. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I have no disclosures relevant to uh, this discussion. And we'll start uh, real quickly with uh, a case study. We've, we've done about uh, 40 trans aortics in various sundry forms now, and uh, there's a whole other discussion about off-label and reimbursement that, that Bill can enlighten us on. And, Mauricio and, and that group before Bill left uh, looked at pretty intensely. But let's just start with this simple example, EB, 94-year-old Caucasian, classic stuff that we see, classic things that you know. Class 4, heart failure, COPD, pretty healthy stuff that we'll see on the next page, hypertension, all the usual things, bilateral pleural effusions, uh, bilateral thoracentesis. Uh, and so our decision was BAV to decision because she started, as you'll see, with an STS risk score of 15.1. So she was bordering on class uh, on cohort C for us, and you can see I slipped in pre and post numbers here on certain things. STS 15.1, post BAV dropped to 10.7, uh, non-qualifying for intermediate risk. Uh, she was half frail, so to speak, failed grip and walk, and pre BAV her FEV1 was 38%, 0.62, and that's usually a red flag for uh, everything headed that way. And, and we've certainly converted some of these people who've been down as low as uh, below 0.5 liters. Uh, you can see that she improved to over a liter, 67%, uh, and her STS risk score dropped to 10.7. So we liked all that. But even post-BAV, her DLCO was 5.6. We measured all those things, and it certainly smells like additional lung disease on top of what we had initially. So in looking at that, um, in, in a discussion, you can see that we had the whole team evaluator. <clears throat> Everybody was there that day, and, uh, you know, Mike basically says, uh, I think this is a good time for us to move towards trans just on the basis of lung disease. Mm -hmm. um, 